بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد We ask Allah the Almighty for guidance, for strength and His favor. We seek His pleasure. We seek forgiveness from Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be of Jannah to Firdaus, the inhabitants of Jannah to Firdaus, and may Allah forgive us of our many sins. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and all of our families. And bless us to be of those people who are people strong in Iman and people who have good morality and manners and exhibit Tawheed, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Anabi Dar Jundub. Ibn Junada wa Abi Abdurrahman Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma Anna Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Ittaqi allaha haythma kunt Wa attaba' sayyat al-hasanata tamhuha Wa khalik al-nasa bi khulqin hasan Ruahu tirmidhi wa qala hadith hasan وفي بعد النصر حسن صحيح In this hadith The hadith of Mu'adh Wa Abi Dhar رضي الله تعالى عنهما They reported that the message of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said اتق الله حيث ما كنت Fear Allah wherever you are And follow up bad deeds with a good deed, and it will erase it. And exhibit to the people excellent manners. And this is collected in Tirmidhi. In this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, it doesn't require much explanation. It's very clear from the Zahir al of the many benefits and the importance of having taqwa Allah Azza wa Jalla, of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we've mentioned countless times, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taqwa Allah, is adhering to his, his commandments and avoiding his prohibitions, those things he has prohibited us from. That is taqwa Allah Azza wa Jalla, and that increases your taqwa Allah Azza wa Jalla in and of itself. And that's a part of Iman. And that's a part of your Islam. And it's an act of ibadah. It's an act of worship. It involves worship in the various forms by having taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. So the Prophet Sallallahu ordered us with taqwa, ordered us to fear him. And he said, fear Allah wherever you are. So that means wherever you are, not just in the masjid that you don't backbite and don't behave uh, in an ill manner, or not just when you're in front of your parents, but in fact, wherever you are, strive to have good manners and exhibit the Islamic characteristics, which are aliyah, which are very high. And follow up a sin with something righteous. So whenever you commit a sin, and we commit so many sins, try to do something good afterwards to try to get rid of that. Try to erase that. So if you have a problem with, for example, substance abuse, when you sober up, strive to make, to make wudu and pray two units of prayer for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intention to get rid of those sins. Oh Allah, forgive me for what I've done. This is for your sake, for the evil wickedness that I did. And if you have problems with committing fornication and, and masturbation and other things like this. The same. Follow it up with a good deed. That doesn't mean that every, that you, you are striving to sin and then you figure you're just going to erase it. No. But it means whenever you fall into sinfulness, strive to erase it. 
Try, strive to get rid of it by doing something good. Give charity. Spend of your wealth in something that's good. Feed a hungry Muslim. Feed a hungry person in general. Do, do something khair. Fast. And all the other ways in which we can gain forgiveness. And what's easy for us all is to pray rakatain. At least. Supplicate to Allah. Ask for His forgiveness. His grace, mercy, and favor. And the last advice that we, that we were ordered with in that hadith is to have excellent manners towards others. And may Allah forgive us of our many shortcomings in all of these respects with regards to our manners, with regards to having very little taqwa, with regards to uh, even not following up, even when we do sins. May Allah forgive us. We're weak. And we need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, strive to have good manners with people. When you address them, address them with terms of respect. When you interact with them, interact with them with gentleness. All of those things are supported by the Sharia, are supported by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ma min shayin atkalu fi mizan mu'min yom al qiyamah min husn al khuk, wa inna Allaha yubghidu al fahsh al bidi." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale that will weigh heavier on the scale of a believer on the day of judgment than good manners. And verily Allah hates sinful and wicked speech. So safeguard your tongue. And safeguard your private parts. The Prophet ﷺ said that he would guarantee the one who safeguards his tongue and his private parts Jannah. That they will get Jannah. And that's what we want. That's what it's all about. It's about worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Striving to get to Jannah. Striving to do those things that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah forgive us of our many sins and bless us with al nafi ruskin tayyibu amalan mutakabbilan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.